In the last video, we saw we can have a potential problem when storing instances of a class and in multiple instances of a different types of classes in uh, arrays or array lists. So the example that I gave was uh, that of a shopping cart for an online store of com my computer objects. Uh, and we can easily store my computers in the shopping cart. But if I try to add a my phone, as we have right here, and I compile, I get an error because uh, arrays in Java can only hold one type of object. Um, Although conceptually, I'd like to have two or many more in my shopping cart. Uh, similarly, the array list of my phone objects called wish list can store phones, but it cannot store computers. So if I compile this, same type of thing, get an error. Uh, and again, by the rules, I cannot store on my computer an array list of my phones, but conceptually, I'd like to be able to do something like that because uh, my wish list may have different types of items. So luckily there is a concept in Java called inheritance that lets us solve this problem. And the basic gist of the idea is actually pretty simple. I'm actually gonna not going to store my computers specifically in a shopping cart. I'm actually going to create a new class called a my device that's more generic, more all encompassing than a, my computer or my phone or anything electronic or that's device, which I deem a device, and create an array of those. And because I will make a my computer and a my phone a device, then they'll be able to fit into the array. Although we're still technically uh, storing a single type of thing, although that single type of thing encompasses many objects. And likewise, if I just copy this, I can adjust my for each loop. I can adjust my array list here, just like that. So I can store many different types of objects. So the trick is creating this my device class. If I can do that, then I can store all these different types of objects. Uh, and many that I haven't created yet, as long as they're all my devices. So let's go ahead and do this. Now what this revolves around are commonalities in the classes that I'm dealing with. So let me take a look at these classes. Here's my phone, and let me bring up my computer here as well. Get them lined up so you can see them both, so I can point out the common elements of the two classes. Um, so if we take a look at them together, we can see that they actually have lots of common things. The price, the memory is in stock. They're all double int boolean, same name. Uh, the first three lines of the constructor here carriers the the, the unique uh, instance variable. So that's going to be the common thing. Carrier is going to be the unique thing for the methods, constructors, and if we look below the two string, um, the ship item method is actually identical. It's just the two string is slightly different because it has a carrier. So there's lots of common things. So basically, what we're going to do in the next uh, couple minutes here in the video is to move these things out or factor them out into the super class. So these are going to shrink significantly. These two classes are going to have lots of the common elements taken out of them. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, close this, these two up and let's create that new class called my device. And if I do this correctly, then I can implement inheritance and store those different types of objects in there. So here's my device. And I'm going to get rid of the template stuff here. I'm going to say public class my device one two three and class my device. And basically, what I'm looking to do is uh, cut out the common elements from computer and phone and to put them in here, and to create a link between computer and my phone to my device. So let's do that. Let's take a look at the my computer object here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the link between a my computer and my device, and it's done with this uh, keyword called extends. I'm going to extends my device, meaning it is a my device. That's what it really means. A my computer is a my device, and similarly, a my phone is going to extend a my device. So you get to define extends with an S, my device. So you get to define what is a my device. Um, now you can do that to any class, but you want to make sure that everything conceptually makes makes sense. Uh, so, what I'm going to do right here, actually, I'm just going to take these three lines of code because they are common to both the computer and the phone. I'm going to cut them out, literally cut them out, go over here and literally cut them out, and put them into a my device. So I factored those things out, like the the the, the concept of factoring and algebra, factor out the common elements. The next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go down the list here with the big three is take a look at the constructors. The constructor here and the constructor in my phone, if I get them together, are very similar. I have a three argument constructor. This is three, 
but it has the fourth extra one, which we can deal with separately. This has three, and this has the same three with the extra. So these, these constructors are actually very similar except that last thing. So what I'm going to do here, if you, if you notice, I'm going to just take out the common elements there, take out the common elements there, and take out the con Actually, what I'm going to do to make this actually easy is these two constructors are pretty much what I want my device to look like. I'm going to actually copy them, copy them, but then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete what's in there because it's this, the super class, my device, is actually going to do all the work. Same thing here. I took them out already. Close. So you'll see what happens here when I do it. This is going to be my device and my device. So I've taken the common elements out. I've factored them out into the superclass. Okay. Uh, there's one thing we have to do though. We have to make sure that my computer, and my um, phone, actually use that constructor. Because I, I've taken it out here. How does it know to actually use it? There's a new thing, point number two, super. This means call the constructor of my super class. In this case, my my device. My super class is my device. It's the class that I am extending. So I'm going to call that con constructor. So it really just calls those three lines of code, which makes my life a lot easier. And then I'm going to do the same thing for a phone. Uh, I'm going to say super. Call those three lines of the uh, device that I moved in there. Now, how about the multi-argument constructor? I don't have anything in there. Well, if I just call super without parentheses or with parentheses like this, I'm going to call the zero argument constructor. I actually want to do this. I'm going to call the constructor, but with three arguments. Initial price, initial memory, and initial is in stock. I'm going to call the constructor, the three argument constructor like this. So this is going to call the constructor right above me. And I'll do the same thing in uh, phone. So it's going to call the constructor of these three, and then I'll do this by myself. My phone is going to have to do this by this it, itself because it has the unique uh, carrier. Uh, so you might want to take a break. Just let's take a look. Let's review what we've done so far. We got a couple more steps. Let me move this aside here so you can get my computer up. And so right now, if I move this over a little bit, so you can see the instance variables have been moved out to my device. The three have been moved out, leaving carrier because I can't factor out. It's not common to the to the computer. I've taken out all three lines of the constructor here, three lines here, with that extra one. I've taken out all three lines of the my computer, uh, three uh, multiple argument. This is a three argument constructor, and I've taken these three lines out and I've added my fourth. Okay, so the next couple things are these methods. So this one now is actually very easy because they are they are identical. In fact, I can just simply take them out. I can cut this out. So you can see how this phone and computer are getting actually pretty streamlined here. Cut that out, and it will go into the my device. So this is kind of nice because I'm only writing the code once. And in fact, if I make any change in the my device method, it's automatically changed for both the computer and the phone. I don't have to change them in two different places, which is really nice. Um, otherwise, you have problems with making sure everything is consistent. And that's where a lot of errors can pop in. Uh, finally, to make this all work, is we have to deal with the two string. So again, let me pull up both so you can see the differences here or the similarities. So these two classes, you can actually see they're very short now. They're very similar. They're very similar except this carrier here. So what? What I can do here is I can say, you know what, this one actually is a good model of what I want two string look like. So I'm actually going to copy this and put it into put it into my device. So my device is going to actually have this. I just cut and paste it in there. Meaning we can kind of clean this up. We can have two string here. And we can actually say, you know what? Instead of writing all the code here myself, 
Remember we had super here? That's one version of super to call the constructor. I can say super dot to string. I can say, you know what? If I'm if there's a method uh, or someone's trying to call to string from my computer, I'm gonna say, you know what? I already have the code. It's in my device, and I'll let it handle all the details. So that's kind of nice because now look at the my computer class. It's very streamlined. Almost all the details are moved out into the my device. And if I go to my phone, uh, looks like I have kind of the same stuff here, but I have the carrier. So what I'll do is I'll say, you know what? These lines here can actually be replaced with super dot to string plus, and I think I got a little tab in there or something, or a new line. I'll put a new line. So I'll say, you know what? Device, do what you do, print out the uh, cost, the memory, and the isn't stock information, and then I'll add in the carrier myself. So again, you, and just looking at this, you can see it's very, very streamlined. I've pretty much moved everything into the super class, my device, and that's the my device class. So let's see if this actually works. Let's close it, let's compile it, and it worked. And now when I've done this, you can see that now my phone and my computer are kind of under my device because they are my device objects. And my phone is a my device and my computer is a my device. And if I create two or three or five or six more products, I can all make them all my devices, meaning they all fit in the shopping cart. So let's click close here and let's try to run this thing. So right now, these are the two computers. And that's the third element in the array. So now I'll try to add in the my phone. Let's see if it works. Compile. It compiles. That's good. And then I will run it. And now I have my computers. This is from the first printout. My computers, and there's my phone. So that's all the information for my phone as well. So it looks like it works. And let's see if my wish list works. Let's go to my wish list. And I'm going to cut and paste this. And what I'll do to is I'm going to put a uh, couple new lines here to separate the output. I'm going to go to the wish list and print out. I should probably make this device because it's a little more generic in name. I'm not printing out computers per se, I'm printing out devices. Go to my wish list and print them out. My, my phone, I'm going to give it, uh, I think it had four arguments, right? Uh, the memory, I had the cost, I had the the uh, carrier, no, it was the, um, uh, what was the argument? Price, memory, is in stock. That's a computer. Price, memory, is in stock, and carrier. Price, memory is in stock, and carrier is right. So, so I'm going to add a phone and a computer in here, and let's see if this thing works. Let's compile. Uh, this should be a device. Compile it, and uh, device again. Compile, and Let's run it. And it looks like I am getting my um, shopping cart here. And this is the phone I just made. That's in stock, carriers there, and there's my zero argument constructor for my computer. So in review, when I have different instances of classes and I want to store them together in an array, I normally can't. However, if I create this super class, we call it, that's kind of an all-encompassing class with all the common information, common instance variables, constructors, methods, two strings, all factored out in there, and then I create the link to the subclass, my phone, to the super class, my device, then I create the link there, which you see by this little line right here that creates a link, and then um, anytime I want to initialize, there were a couple couple uh, teaching points here. Super calls the constructor for the class above it, the zero argument. This calls the three argument. And this version of super can call a specific method. So I'll say for the my phone, let's say, 
call the two string of the class above me, which is all of the cost and carrier and in stock information, and then finally print out the forward. So you can use this as a model for uh, creating your own programs that uh, need to store different type of objects into a, an array or a RAM list.